In this section, we're going to look at the Record Power WG250 Camber Jig. Now we use this for sharpening plane blades. Plane blades below around two and a quarter inches often need a camber on the edge of the blade. So for planes like block planes, smoothing planes or jack planes, which are often used to, to plane across the surface of a board, what we don't want is the edges of the blades digging into the timber. It leaves something called tram lines. So to avoid that, we're going to grind a slight camber on the edge, and this jig will help us do that. To begin with, I've located the blade centrally in the jig, and can you see that the screw, which is central to the jig, you can see it through the slot of the plane blade. Can you see that? How that is lined directly with the central stem of the jig. Okay, so the second thing that you need to look out for is this little component here. You see how it's quite wobbly? But if you put an upwards pressure onto the bottom of the jig, what this will do is it will give you uh, an indication as to whether your blade is at 90 degrees to the support bar and in turn to the stone. So what we need to do is push that upwards and can you see how if I offer that against the side of the blade, that'll tell me whether I've adjusted my blade in the jig correctly. So it's central and it's at 90 degrees. Once we've done that, we can just tighten these locking knobs in place. Okay, the next thing that we need to look at are these two little wheels on the underside of the jig. And what these wheels do is they simply make sure that there's no play in the jig between the jig and the supporting arm. You can adjust them so that they're just touching the arm to make sure that the jig is parallel to the supporting arm, but they don't want to be wound down too tight because the jig still needs to be able to move from side to side. Okay, so the final adjustments that we need to make are with these knobs here. Now, they're all important, but these ones are crucial. And what these adjust is the amount of camber that we're going to give to the blade. Now, can you see this rocking action here. As I'm pushing on these end stops, as I adjust these knobs, this will give me a greater or less of a rock and therefore greater or less camber. Can you see that? The average angle of a plane blade is around 25 degrees, but because of the hollow grind that a a whetstone grinder will give us, we need to increase that angle by about two degrees. So we'll set our uh, angle setting gauge at 27 degrees. So there's our 27 degrees. I'm then going to place the heel of the guide on the wheel and I'm going to offer this flat area here so that it sits nicely onto the blade and the objective is, is it needs to be completely parallel with the angle of the blade. I don't want to see any light through there. So if I need some micro adjustment, I can raise the blade up or down by raising the supporting arm on this micro adjustment. So now I know that this blade is going to be 27 degrees. Okay, so now let's put the camber on the blade. I'm gonna blacken the cutting edge angle with a marker pen. And in theory, what's gonna happen is that we should have some black left in the middle of the blade and the sides should be removed. So hopefully that then will show that we've got an equal camber across the blade. So we start the machine up. Now, before I actually make a pass, what I'm gonna show you is that when I move to the left hand side of the machine, I'm going to push down on the right hand button. And when I move to the right hand side of the machine, I'm gonna push down on the left hand side of the button. So my pass is going to the left and to the right. I'm pushing down on the right hand button as I'm moving to the left of the machine. And I'm pushing on the right hand button as I move to the left of the machine. And so we can speed that up. So do you see this action? Okay, let's take a look. There we go. Can you see how that camber is now being formed? So what we can see here 
is that it's removing the tips of the blade equally and leaving the center of the blade nice and high. So we'll do a few more passes and then we'll move on to honing. Okay. Oh, okay, so there you have it. Um, we now should have a really nice consistent camber across the top of that blade. You can still see that some of the black is left in the middle. Okay, so our next process is honing. And all I've done so far is I've simply relocated the support arm, I've put it in the horizontal position, and I've fitted to the support arm the camber jig. I haven't changed any settings at all. Now I just want to draw your attention to this edge again. Before I put the black pen on, I ground the entire surface off so that I can actually feel a burr along the entire back edge of the blade. Obviously now, after I blacked it, you can see how the camber has been formed. We've got a high point in the middle and the edges have been ground away ever so slightly. So now what I need to do is re-blacken the cutting edge angle so that I can establish the right angle to hone to. So now let's just blacken that cutting edge angle once again. I simply want to adjust the jig and the angle of the blade so that I'm recreating the same cutting edge angle that I've achieved off the grinding wheel. And to do that, if I just draw this wheel like that, and then take a look at what area I've removed off the blade, there you can see, if anything, it's just removing a little bit more off the heel. So I'll just adjust this micro adjustment ever so slightly. I want it to come a little bit further out. So I'm gonna wind that micro adjustment out a touch, tighten up. Let's try that again. So I've now established the honing wheel is cutting at the tip of the blade. It's removed the marker from the edge of the blade. So now let's turn the machine on and hone the blade. So the same principle applies. As I'm moving the blade to this side of the machine, I'm pushing down here. And as I move into that side of the blade, I'm pushing down on this side. And if we've got it right, let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. It's removed the pen consistently across the blade. We're really starting to get a very sharp edge. If I run my finger on the back of the blade, I can feel a consistent burr and we need to remove this. Now with a plain blade, it's really important that we keep the back of the blade perfectly flat. So what I'd like to do is remove the jig completely from the support arm. I'm gonna keep the blade in the jig, but I just wanna remove the burr by running the, the, the back of the blade along a bench stone. I know this bench stone's nice and flat, and that is just simply helping me remove the burr. Okay, yeah, now that's gone. So I'm gonna put it back on the machine, a couple more passes, and then we're ready to put it in the plane. So we've got the plane blade in the plane. Let's give it a test. So the important part of is that I'm planing through the center of a panel and there's no drag marks. I'm not creating any tram lines caused by the edges of the plane blade through the timber. It's actually creating little dished effects. The camber jig works pretty well. Mm -hmm.